Okay, right, today we're going to be working on the ear and I've sketched in just quickly all of the areas where the lines are but I'm going to lift that up a little bit because it's a bit of a messy sketch and I don't want any of the lighter parts to show through but I do want to be able to see these lines still. So just using my kneadable eraser And that's better, so it doesn't really catch it on camera, but I can still see where everything is. Now, I'm going to go over the whole thing, I think, with the cold grey one, just because, again, we can use the slice tool then, and there isn't really much in this ear that is lighter than cold grey one. There's no white or anything like that. So I'm just going to go in and add this all over the ear. Just want to add some little areas that stick out so it's not too uniform. I'm using really big circles. I have cleaned up the paper just before I did this, but I, then I started working on the muzzle. I noticed there was a little bit of a strange section on the muzzle. So then I ended up getting a little bit of smudging. It's the problem when you've added black it just goes everywhere and it's really quite important to not put it on too early because it just ends up smudging. So I'm just going to do a few layers of this cold grey, just adding it all over, make sure I have got it all over. We didn't, I don't think I used the slice tool at all in the other ear, so I'm not even sure we're going to need it, but it's nice to know it's there if you do need it. I'm not worrying about rotating my pencil because I do want to cover a big surface area, so it's got nice and flat on one side, but I will need to sharpen that when I want to add some detail back in. Going all the way up to the edge. So how many layers is this? Probably three. Trying to make it as even as I can. Brill. Right, now I'm going to map in. I'm not going to go in with the absolute darkest colour that I can see, but I'm going to start to map in where all of the structures are the cold grey four. It's definitely a bit of a combo of the cold and the warm but I want to map in just using sketchy a little bit of a bit that sticks out there that's important to get in just using sketchy lines coming up around here I'm going to add that little divot in so we can need to put that in black. So I'm just going to add that in so I know that I've got the shape there. And then coming up the edge, which is a lot lighter. Just making sure it's not one thickness. That looks quite strange if it's all one thickness going up. There's different areas that show a little bit more than others. So sketching in that area next to it. And again, just making sure it's not just one thickness. This is like a semicircle. So I'm just going to put that in, scribbly lines, not worrying about detail at all at this stage. This is one of my favourite bits to draw black lab ear. Um, coming down into like a pointed part there. And then next to this little bit, there's a bit that comes up here, there's a stripe in there, thin stripe. All these little bits are going to make a big difference. 
and then coming into this part it's actually quite dark but I'm still going to stick with the cold grey 4 adding that in curving it around coming up here there's a really dark bit there and that kind of goes to the edge of the ear kind of attaches to that part and it's darker to the left of that part and then to the right there's a bit of a lighter thing that comes in then there's a bit of edging here so that kind of goes up to the edge in a triangle shape so it's all about the shapes that it's creating and then into that little triangle section there's a darker area that comes up here which is a little bit more of a rectangle dark a bit towards the edge that comes right up here thinking about the shapes again basically following the direction of the fur but not worrying too much about that at this stage what I don't want is horizontal lines that are going to be difficult to get rid of so I am basically following the direction of the fur and then coming up here into this midsection which is really dark flat section here you might find that you can't get every single thing in or the exact shape that it is I always find that um, I don't know why that is it's not really important on this stage but you you might find that you get less than it than is on the reference photo but that's okay just adding a couple of little scribbly lines in the gap there's a light part up there and then this is all kind of dark all different shades of dark but certainly nothing lighter than this cold grey 4 so little scribbly lines kind of following the direction of the fur um, and then coming up here we've got a really dark bit I don't think I'm going to be able to get as much of the dark in as on the reference photo but that's okay. And then this bit, there's light and dark fur. We want to make sure that the edges are sticking out so it's not just flat. We've got lovely fur texture coming off over the edge all the way down the ear. And coming round here. I'm not going to add the bit of body in that's here. I think it would just look a bit strange. I'm just going in with the ear. Right, so that's mapped in really lightly. And now I'm going to go up. I'm going to go up to the... I think I'm going to go straight to cold grey 6, actually. So I'm going to start to map in the darkest parts with this cold grey 6. I'm going to start to almost put in a little bit of fur technique. Not worrying too much but this time I'm definitely following the direction of the fur because it will be harder to to cover up so coming down here Just breaking up the edge slightly, coming down here, and some some lighter parts within, definitely some darker parts, and then down here into this kind of V shape, and then the edge there, 
coming up into that part. It's definitely darker in that edge. I want to leave the lighter part, so although we've got colour all over, I just want to be a bit mindful to leave the lighter parts. Just so that I can map in where everything is and keep track of it, because you'll tend to find as you go darker in certain areas, it's amazing how much lighter this all looks and it starts to disappear. So I just want to keep those marks that I've made visible so that I can map in where everything goes. It's definitely dark up there. So I'm going into the darkest parts only, making sure that's broken up. Coming down, this section at the top is very dark and it does go quite far out to the edge. Coming around. And then this creates its own shape within itself. So it's a little bit flat at the top and then it sticks out down here and it comes to a bit of a point. And down here. And then there's like a lighter gap and then it kind of goes a bit darker. So I'm starting to think about the shapes I can see and the different areas that are dark, much, much darker. Again, just thinking about the shapes that it creates. It's a dark part that comes down there. And then there are some dark lines that come into the light. There's that band that kind of follows up. You can see it's starting to make shapes now. I think I've made this a bit dark, a bit bigger than it is in real life, which is probably why I don't have room up there. But I'm not really that bothered about that. It's not going to make any difference. It's not going to make a difference to the look of the dog. It's just all of these different um, lovely colours in the ear. If I was being more careful, I would have mapped it out and measured everything out, but you just don't need to, it's just a waste of time. So coming up around here, thinking about the shape that that creates, that's pretty dark. Coming down to the edge of the ear. And coming up here, I did find in the other ear this time, I'm really trying to make my fur technique better every time with every piece that I do. And it just goes to show all of these different things that you build up over the years and then trial and error. Some things just tend to click into place. And I think black fur is a really good way to try out all of these things because it's not you haven't got to worry too much about all of the different colours that are involved if it was like a yellow lab trying to balance out the yellows. You know that it's basically just greys and blues and black. So it's a good good chance to have a play really and try some things out. So I'm going to go in with... Um, I think I'm going to blend, which is what I was talking about, these different techniques. I've always done this, but... I've definitely done it more with this drawing. I want the cold grey too, and I'm going to go over the whole thing again and blend really light hand because we still need to add plenty of layers in. But this softens the pencil strokes and it pushes some of the pigment around. Which I think is really important because you don't want these kind of sketchy lines and the more layers we add the, the thicker and the denser the fur looks so I've blended between layers a lot more than I have before and I I've got to say I think it's worth it I think the results are worth it so light hand big circles 
it's softened everything it's got rid of some of the graininess it's pulled the two sections together so we've got the lightest parts and the dark it well not we haven't gone as dark as we need to go but it's pulled in the mid tones a little bit coming around into the edge of the ear that's important i'm just going to add a little bit of a darker color in here because i don't want to forget about that and i've got a feeling i will this is just the charcoal grey. I just wanted that little nick in, in the um, the ear just to make it interesting. I want this little bulgy part as well. Right, I think I'm going to start to build up now. I'm going to go in with the Payne's grey. And again, look at the darkest parts. I'm going to definitely start moving on to fur technique now. Thinking about the le length of your pencil strokes, it's very easy to start doing really long ones because you want to cover a bigger surface area much more quickly. <laughs> Don't worry, I have been there. I completely understand. But that's another technique that I've definitely tried to hone on this piece is much smaller pencil strokes and going over and over and over and it definitely takes longer there's no doubt about it but I think the end result is so much better and so coming down and following this darker pattern And thinking about those small pencil strokes you've got more control over it as well and this is all about slowing down as well it's all about getting lost in the drawing and not trying to just push through to the end I think life we we do it's always about you know what we're doing next and not really enjoying what we're doing right now and I think if we can just slow down and enjoy every single moment of it I know you're not going to enjoy every single moment but if you can enjoy the process as opposed to the end result because the end is just a fleeting moment you get to the end of a portrait it's like yay I've done it and then and then what next it's on to the next one which is you know a pattern that we seem to have in life so I'm trying to be a bit more mindful people have talked about mindfulness all the time but I'm starting to really understand what they mean <laughs> small pencil strokes don't get tempted to to make them bigger if you do start to get an achy hand which I have now you can change the direction of your pencil instead of going down you can go up that just gives you a little bit of a relief from the repetitiveness of it. Um, but then I'll keep changing back and forward. Coming up here, thinking about these little shapes. Don't forget to put light the dark strokes in the light areas as well so if you want to go a little bit darker like I am here you just go over the same area a few times more not making the pencil strokes any bigger we're just adding to it and again I'm just going into the darkest parts so these mid areas are going to start to look very strange very contrasted again but we will pull that together. I'm going to put some of these pencil strokes into the light sections following the direction of the fur because it really ties it all in together. Keeping them quite spaced out, keeping them quite random. The closer together they are, the darker it's going to be. But it's important to have these little pencil strokes within the light pull it all together and there's little patterns within the light areas there's little clumps of darker fur and it does tend to stand out a little bit more creating some curves by following 
the direction of the fur and making it a little bit curved. It's quite fun to do. It just adds to the form and the depth. Changing the direction of my pencil again because my hand's getting tired. But as your hand gets tired, you don't want to start brushing. Coming up into this kind of weird, what would you call this? A parallelogram? <laughs> I have no idea, possibly, because it's like a wonky, it's like in a rectangle that's falling over. Um, Coming down to the edge, carrying on with the Payne's Grey. Coming up into this section. Again, small pencil strokes. Coming up into the edge as well. And how they join together. It's the thing about having the doors open, there's always a fly that comes in and they can never find their way back out again. Joining these up, but not as many pencil strokes, so it's not as dark. You've got to be careful just to change the rotation of your pencil sometimes because you can end up inadvertently inadvertently um, drawing a straight line because you're you're putting the pencil strokes next to each other and they kind of form a line without you even <laughs> wanting them to so every now and again I just flick the pencil and you end up doing little kind of crisscrosses and not just one direction because that can look a little bit fake as well because the hairs do go off on their own really trying to replicate what natural hair and natural fur does. Adding a little bit of dark to there as well. Coming down to this bit. You can choose how much detail to put in, which bits to leave out. Completely up to you, but I do want to make sure that I am putting the darker hairs within the light as well, just to tie it all in. So it's still pretty light at the moment. And down this part as well, they tend to go downwards, maybe off at a little bit of an angle. bit of a curve here. Still small pencil strokes. How does that attach to that section? This is all kind of dark. Adding the light into the, adding the dark into the light areas. Still small pencil strokes. Coming up into this part. Longer hairs or longer sections, you know, it's not a flat edge, there's ones that stick out. Coming up into here, to the edge of the ear, with some of them crisscross again, not just one direction of pencil stroke.
and keeping going and building up. Adding the little dark hairs into the light that joins them all together. Same with this bit. There's light hairs there. But there's dark hairs in amongst them. Just adding a few less so it's not all the same. It's not... And adding in here. These long hairs. the dark hairs within the light. Darkening up here. Some areas just a little bit darker. Coming down, see I'm working over and over now, starting to build up slowly. Starting to take a little bit of shape. Right, I think I'm going to go in with a little bit of blue now, just the sky blue, I'm using a light hand, small circles. I'm adding this into the dark and the light not all over, it's kind of a bluey area up here and quite a purple as well so we might add a little bit of purple in. So I'm now using this blue to soften the pencil strokes. I'm coming down here, there's a lot of blue there. Coming into there. much here, a little bit, more in the top corner and then there's not as much towards the bottom, a little bit here, a little bit on the edge I'm just going to put a tad in but I'm going to put more up here Coming around the edge. I'm going to go in with a little bit of the manganese violet. Just a tad for the same reason. Add a little bit of colour in, not all over. Just adding a little bit of interest. I think these colours really do help. You feel a bit strange putting them in. But there is quite a lot of purple and blue going on. I'm going to add some to here. I'm going to add some into the darkest parts because that needs to be quite a lot darker. And this bit. I'm going to add the dark indigo into the darkest parts. So adding a touch of blue and adding a little bit to the lighter parts as well around it so that we create this lovely depth of colour. Just adding a little bit of blue in. into the lighter parts. Really, really light hand. And able to go a little bit darker and just go over a few more times in the darkest parts because we're going to be adding black and we're going to be adding more greys in 
This really starts to add some depth. The light part in the middle kind of goes out to the edge. That's all really dark. Same with this one. It's really dark down here. The line that's really, really dark. And then this section. Again, really small pencil strokes, not making them any bigger. Curving this one around. coming up here, especially in this left hand side of this area here. So it's looking quite blue at the moment, but don't panic because we will be putting lots of colours over the top. But we want we don't want a grey overall look, we want a kind of bluey grey overall look. So I'm going to add some of this indigo into the lighter parts as well. Trying to keep the first strokes random, following the direction. I'm going to soften all this with greys, so don't worry too much about it looking blue, but you really do want to make sure that you don't just go mad with the blue because it will be difficult to cover up. We want a blue tinge, but we don't want it to look um, too blue. down here, adding it as we come round, and definitely this bit, that's really dark, <laughs> so keeping going with the blue, again thinking about the size of your pencil strokes, Making them random, coming down into a bit of a point there, actually splits off into two and there's quite a lot of blue that goes next to it. I'm just going to sharpen, they're a lot softer, they kind of blunt quite quickly compared to the polychromos. Just adding a little bit of a darker area here. I want to add the blue into the gaps, coming down here. Coming down into this section. Coming down to the edges, down here, making sure that's not too stripey, down into the edge, lots of blue going on here. Adding the blue to the gaps, adding it up here, you can see it's starting to come together, it takes an awful lot of layers. I'm 
joining those two areas together. Adding some blue in here. Another fly coming <laughs> up here with the blue. Darkening up here. Starting to, we're getting there. I'm going to soften the darker areas with the cold grey five. Just adding big circles, side of the pencil, blending some of these pencil strokes around. Adding it to some of the darker areas, and we're starting to bring in the mid-tones now. So we're starting to pull it all together. There's not just areas of light and dark, there's these light mid-tones. That needs to be a lot darker towards the edge. here as well. It's not as light as we've got it, so just adding a little bit of this cold grey. You can control, even though this is quite a dark colour, it's near the top of the greys, you can control how much you put down. So it's only when you start really adding the layers that it starts to darken up. Adding this on top of the black as well. Just breaking those lines up a little bit. Darkening up this edge a little bit. Some bits in here. So we're really joining together some of the lighter parts. There's some lines within there. There's a line within here. lighter part there. Okay and we need to darken up even more so I'm going to go in with cold grey six again and keep building. So we can kind of go in between the blue as well as on top starting to really fill this out create that depth of fur Small pencil strokes still, you still want it to be nice and dense and thick fur. You don't want it to be spaced out. You do find it's like almost false economy. Um, if you start doing big pencil strokes and you think you're covering a bigger surface area, you'll just find that your pencil strokes will be more gappy and then it will look a little bit sparser. So actually it does serve to um, slow down, take your time and use little tiny pencil strokes instead. So you can see that's making it look a lot denser. Coming down here, small pencil strokes still, filling in all these little gaps. And darker towards the bottom.
keep going. And we're starting to get rid of the graininess now. going with black at some point adding this one to the light parts as well and softening the edges starting to add the finishing touches now coming to the edge if the pencil's too blunt you end up with fat bits of fur towards the edge and then it just looks it doesn't look real because fur tends to get and hair thinner towards the end of the strand. And if you've got fat pencil strokes, it just looks a little bit strange. We're coming down here, adding the little pencil strokes in, that lighter edge as well, which isn't really, really light, but it's still lighter than that section. Darkening this up. Darkening this bit up. That's actually quite dark. little section here coming into this section there's some areas that are darker but I'm thinking about the mid tones before I put the black in so adding that in section little lines little patterns in the light okay Feel like we're getting there. Dark hairs within the light. I want to blend. I'm going to blend with a cold grey one. So you do knock the pencil back a little bit, but you're definitely softening everything. It just looks so much nicer up close. It just looks finished in a way. It doesn't look crayon-y. You can still see the first strokes, but they're not as fat. They're not as gappy, if that makes sense. It pulls all of the areas in together, softening the edges as well. Yeah, I think it just gives a polished look. I think that's the look I'm going for, polished. Pulling all those patterns in together. There we go. I think 
I'm going to go in with the black now. And work into the areas that really need darkening up. So here, really thinking about your pencil strokes again. Not too small, uh, not too big. Keeping them small. And going over the same area a few times if you want it darker. So we're going over the blue, which is lovely. You get that under tone of blue. You might have to go over quite a few times, thinking about the black here. Softening the edges a little bit. A little bit of a shadow in there. softening this edge, some lines that come down, small pencil strokes again, bringing that round. Adding to the bottom, not as many, the line in here, I want to darken that. So I'm just going into the darkest parts that I can see. Coming across. Just going to go into these. I didn't add anything there. I'll soften those as we go further up. And then coming into this section. Darkening up this bit. And coming down. Just thinking about the shape of the patterns that the dark colours are taking on. Is it coming down in lines? Is it a little bit curved around the edge of this shadow? Really showing the black. Coming along the edge, coming down here, a little triangle shape. This is when the hands start to ache. So changing direction if it's really starting to, to ache. Darkening up this bit. Definitely get to that point where we don't have endless amount of layers. We do have to think about how many more layers we've got to do before it starts to 
burnish. So, um, little dots in there. Oh, getting there. An edge. It looks like it's curling around a little bit. Um Very, very close to finishing. Um, we just need to bring it all together now. Paint this grey again. So adding this in between the black. Pulling those shapes in. Making sure the edge isn't too straight down here. Coming to the edge. So we're tying it all in now. Even in the light parts, I want to add some dark. little speckles so tying in the darkest mid-tones now in with the black and we can always go back over the top of the black this needs to be dark That needs to be dark. That middle section. All the little light sections need dark pencil within them. And then following the pattern up, even in this lighter part, little flecks of dark. longer parts that come down, these edged parts, and definitely up here. It's starting to push a little bit harder now. Tying in this section. I'm going to go over with the cold grey five again, blending. softening the pencil strokes, going darker where there's definitely darker areas, really tying it all in, going over a few times. Okay, 
down here, joining those two bits together. Joining those bits together. Joining in the middle there. Brilliant. Right, need to go back in with the black, I think. I'm not going with a different black, I'm with the Pablo's black. Just a little bit more depth. Sometimes the polychromos black you put in so many times it almost doesn't show up anymore so adding this in just helps a little bit should just need to add a little bit over the top just to deepen some of the sections thinking about the size of your pencil strokes keeping them small Definitely this bit. Darkening up that part, that's really quite dark and it kind of gets lost as to how dark it is down there. My hand's getting dead now. This section. in here, this section, joining them together just a little bit. section so you can hear I'm pressing a little bit harder now I think I might go in with the Inden Throne Wyndham Throne and just adding a touch more blue just to tie it all in we can go over the top again with the black. There's blue in the gaps there, in the highlighted areas. down into the lighter parts. That's quite a nice blue colour really. So now we have got a bit of a blue tinge. I 
we can go over those areas with the cold grey five and just pull them all in So just softening the blue just a little bit. We don't want it to go. We want it to look blue because we've got blue on quite a lot of the rest of the drawing. And it does create a lovely shine, which is important. Adding that a little bit to here. Okay, and then we're going to go in with the black again, hopefully for the last time. I want to add some of the black pencil strokes into the light. Make sure there's enough of the fur texture in there. We've got blues, we've got greys, we've got every colour going on. And then darkening up still these certain areas. And they've got the blue tinge at the end now, which is good. Just adding a little bit more. the edge going down here a little bit adding some to the light parts tying all of this in some lines making sure it's not all over and that dark patch up through the middle Adding some to the in-between parts as well. This part down here. Getting to the limit now. we should probably do now is come back with fresh eyes just have a look to see how it's looking and see if it needs softening I think it, I think while I'm here actually I'm going to soften all the little pencil strokes that I've put in I'm going to go in with the cold grey two just add a little bit of that in as well. Around the edge. Coming up here, softening these pencil strokes. Coming up here as well, softening these. I think that's looking better. I think I'm going to go over the whole thing now, but the ear's basically done. 
and um, I'm just going to zoom out. So zooming in, you can see the pencil strokes. And then zooming out, you can kind of see how it looks as a whole. I'm just going to lift up this so it's kind of in. So it probably needs a little bit of tinkering, but I think it looks like the light is shining on a black dog. You can definitely tell it's black. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful for textured and shiny black fur. If you did like the video, it'd be great if you could like and subscribe and share it with your friends. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you're notified of future videos. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.